Hello, how's everyone doing? It is your fallen angel back with another video. We are continuing our series in the Brahmacharya playlist, specifically the eight breaks in Brahmacharya. So without further ado, let us begin. You should carefully avoid the eight kinds of enjoyment, namely darshan, or looking at women with passionate resolve, sparshan, or touching them, Kelly or play, kirtan, or praising the qualities of the other sex, guya, bashan, or talking in private, sankalpa, or determination, adya, vasaya, or nearing the other sex with a desire for gratification, and kriya, nivriti, or the actual sexual act. So these are the eight breaks in Brahmacharya. We'll go over one more time. So, Darshan, looking at women with passionate resolve. This is you using lustful eyes, right? Brahmacharya is not just about physical. It's about everything. The mental, the physical, the emotional state. Now, looking at someone with lust is also breaking your contract in Brahmacharya. Sparshan are touching them. This is a force, form of intimacy. Kelly or play. This is a form of intimacy that can always lead to other things. Kirtan or praising the qualities of the other sex. Now these verbal innuendos are also forms of emotional intimacy, verbal intimacy. Guya, bashan or talking in private. This is also a break in brahmacharya, right? This is you not understanding the true power of words and the intimacy that happens when the opposite sex are in private. Sankalpa, or determination, right? Men are very visual creatures. Now, you must not be too determined. Your determination must always be focused on the utmost Atman, the God above, the Creator. It should never be determined on anything lustful. Adya, Vasaya, or nearing the other, sex, with the desire for gratification. So, many people, they joke, tease, play with women because they want some sort of gratification, whether it's positive or negative, they want some sort of gratification. And these things act as planting a seed, right? This is like planting a seed and this could grow into something greater. And then Kriya, Nivriti, or the sexual act itself. This is the final break of the eight breaks of Brahmacharya. These eight kinds of enjoyment are eight kinds of breaks, so to say, in the current of Akananda Brahmacharya practice. You must avoid these eight interruptions with great care. See how we call these interruptions, because that's exactly what they are. They are interruptions of the mental, the emotional, and the physical. You must avoid these eight interruptions with great care. Sincere exertion and vigilant circumspection. A brahmachari should avoid looking at women with lustful eyes. He should not have the desire to touch her or go near her, go near her with evil intention. So there's many men that when a woman walks by, they break their necks to look back, right? Because they have very lustful thoughts. They have lustful looks. They have lustful desires, right? You should never be looking at women for objective purposes, looking below the neck, looking behind when they walk behind you. These are ways to break your breaks in brahmacharya. You must stay linear focused in your path to the supreme path of the Atman of all Atmans, the inner Atman, the inner self. You should never look at a woman with these lustful eyes. You should see them as you would see your mother, your grandmother, your sister, your daughter herself. You should always go with this level of respect. Not just because you want to display this sort of respect, but because you are a well, well-known aspirant that's well embraced in Brahmacharya, both physically, mentally, and emotionally. You should also not go have the desire to touch her or go near her with evil intention. You should never put your hands on a woman any for no reason unless she is your wife. 
right? And even when you are married, you could still be a brahmachari. We will explain this much later when we get into this topic. But for the most part, you should never ever have these evil intentions, these lustful intentions of any sorts. Even if you think it's playful or teasing, these things are count as planting seeds. And these seeds can end up becoming something bigger and bigger over time. He should not play, cut jokes, or converse with her. He should not praise a woman's qualities within himself or before his friends. So, like we explained, these acts that you do, these words that you do, these jokes, these playful natures, these act as planting seeds. These seeds end up leading to bedroom antics, right? There's this saying, you can make her laugh and giggle. You can make her etc. For the people that know how to finish that, they'll finish that for you. But for the most part, you should not be doing any sorts of these things. You should be very, very strict on your looks, very, very strict on your words, very, very strict on yourself. This is how you embrace brahmacharya fully, physically, emotionally, and mentally. Now, this isn't to say that you can't converse with anyone and you should just be a monk by yourself, but this is to say you should be diligent of your actings. You should be diligent of your wordings. You should be diligent of your physical touch. All of this is important to a person that wants to be an aspirant of the brahmacharya nature. Especially praise. These sorts of praise. We know why you're praising a woman's qualities, whether it's by yourself or before your friends. It's because you are foreseeking or foreshadowing the future. Whether this is because you see some lustful nature, whether you want to have children with this woman, you are trying to foreshadow a future that you're seeing in your hippocampus. For the people that can see around you what you are doing, they see it. But don't matter what people are thinking what you're doing, you should have the lens on what you're doing because even if you don't think you're being watched, everything is being watched and recorded from the Atman of all Atmans. Brahma is watching everything. He should not speak to a woman in secrecy. He should not think of woman at all. He should not have a carnal desire to have sexual enjoyment. Now, when we understand this concept, you should really follow this thoroughly, especially if you want to be well embraced in brahmacharya. Because it always starts off as planting a seed, right? If it's just talking, if it's just thoughts these things end up manifesting to the physical plane. If it's just a simple thought, whether this is you actually doing the act of copulation, touching, etc., or wet dreams, these all stem from the beginning. It's not just something that ends up being the end product. These all stem from a beginning product, whether this is secrecy of talking, whether this is secrecy of thoughts, whether this is carnal desires of lust. These all are the beginning points that end up to an end point. So it's essential to have all these desires and lusts in check prior to it ever ending up to being a bad thing. This is like when you get a, a dog, right? Let's say you get a dog, a very big dog, and at the moment you get it, you see he has a very bad temperament or he does something destructive at the beginning. If you don't snip this in the butt early on, it becomes something worse. It becomes a greater monster later. This is the same thing with lust. If you don't snip it in the butt early on, it becomes greater, bigger, more massive and it becomes something uncontrollable later so it's essential to snip it in the butt early on a brahmachari shouldn't should without fail avoid sexual intercourse if he breaks any of the above rules he violates the vow of brahmacharya so we already know to be well embraced in brahmacharya you have to avoid the sexual intercourse now you must also avoid these lustful thoughts because to be a full aspirant it's not about just letting the physical body in control you must be control of your breath the prana as well as your mind and the physical state and the emotional state because these are all intertwined together these threefold reality controls the entire body though the first seven kinds of mathuna do not cause the actual loss of semen Yet the semen is separated from the blood, and it tries to escape when the opportunity arises, either in dreams or in other ways. In the first seven kinds, man enjoys mentally. This emotional intimacy 
is something that men enjoy, women enjoy. Thoughts, speaking, hearing lustful stories, talking about lustful things, touch, etc. Now, while this may not be the exact sexual act, this is a form of intimacy that you must avoid to be embraced in brahmacharya. Aspirants should not indulge and talk about sex. They should not think about ladies. Bring the image of your Ishta Devata into your mind. If the thought of a woman crops up, repeat the mantra vigorously. You should always be well endowed in your meditation, whether this would be with your mantras, whether this be with your mudras, mudras, using your hands to create more power, potent power around you, mudras and mantras, your ohms. Using this to make sure you're channeled within yourself, controlling the breath. The prana is the most important part to get through anything, whether this is lust, whether this is anger, deceit, torment, trauma. You must control the, the breath, the prana in the exact moment. If you allow your breath to get out of control, you will get anxious. When the breath is out of control, you have no control over your thoughts and body. The prana has to always be controlled no matter the moment. Lustful look, lustful thinking, wet dreams are all failures or breaks in brahmacharya. Be chaste in your look. Give up drishti dosha or lustful look. A lustful look itself is a break in brahmacharya. There is internal discharge. Virya is separated from the system. So guys, it's essential to understand not to look at women in a lustful manner. Always view them as you would view your mother, your grandmother, your sister, your daughter. You do not look at them with lustful eyes. You look at them as someone you would want to protect, someone you want to care for, etc. This is the this is the practice of brahmacharya in full display. In its full entity of understanding the Atman of all Atmans, the inner self. Now there is a reason why your carnal desires, your animalistic desires are so strong, right? Is the reason why it's so strong. And to battle them is the journey. Right To understand them is the journey. To understand how potent this virya is. The virya is the sperm. And understanding how potent it is, is essential to your livelihood. See Mother Kali and all women. Cultivate sublime, divine thoughts. Do japa and meditation regularly. You will be established in brahmacharya. Now, Mother Kali is a representation of creation and destruction. Similarly to what we know as Lord Shiva, right? You must meditate regularly. You must create a safe haven when you meditate. Meditate thoroughly. Breathe. Control your breath work. And have pure thoughts. And you will make brahmacharya quite easy. Brahmacharya will come very, very easy if you meditate regularly. Control the breath. Control the mind. And it will control the physical as well. So with that being said, guys, this has been another video in our brahmacharya playlist going over the eight breaks in brahmacharya feel free to like and subscribe leave a comment down below check us out on patreon rumble twitter instagram things of that nature this has been your fallen angel and i am out